Hello and welcome. India faces some very foundational challenges when it comes to health, healthcare. The question that we are asking is, can technology, in the many ways that we know it, solve some of these problems, whether it's, it's at the research and development level, whether it's the development level, and whether it's delivering healthcare to the millions of people who need it? And who better to put that question to than Kiran Mazumdar Shaw, the founder of uh, uh, Biotron, one of the world's largest biotechnology companies. Uh, Kiran Mazumdar Shaw, thank you very much for speaking with us. So let me get a broad sense from you first, right? So we have a huge healthcare problem in this country. It's, it's as much delivery as it is, let's say, the number of doctors who are available the number of specialist doctors who are available, a point that you've alluded to in the past. So as a technology plus medicine or healthcare person, how do you see this problem? Well, you know, there's no debate on this. I mean, the technology bridge is the only way you are going to solve this huge deficit problem. Whether it is uh, healthcare delivery, mm -hmm. whether it is healthcare research, whether it is, uh, you know, just basically producing diagnostics and, uh, you know, drugs, and vaccines, everything today is about digital technologies. Now, let me just focus mm. on this great initiative of Ayushman Bharat, okay, where we want to basically, you know, cover every Indian citizen in mm. terms of providing them healthcare. with access to healthcare. How are we going to do it? I can still tell you that you may still be able to reach the uh, semi urban areas, but providing access to healthcare in rural India is today absolutely unthinkable and unimaginable in the very in the in the state it is in. Mm. And no matter what the government does, it's going to be very difficult. Mm. So you have to use technology and it is also if you want it to sustain, it has to be thought through much more. Mm. It is about preventive healthcare mm. and it is about predictive healthcare. Mm. This is what will actually build a sustainable healthcare model. I don't think people have thought it through the way it should be because otherwise in its current format it is not sustainable and it will not also produce uh, or rather provide access to the rural population in our country. Right. So creating digital primary health centers that basically start collecting data of, of, of our population, our rural population. You know we have uh, through our CSR created about 30 such e-healthcare centers, primary healthcare centers, we call them ELAJ. And there we see that just being able to collect vital information, basic vitals of uh, patients who are coming to those primary health centers is making a big difference in the way we can actually look at these populations. Give, give us an example. So for instance, um, these, these primary health centers are really mm. uh, centers we have adopted yeah. from government. Mm. So obviously you have to upgrade them a bit and then in, you know arm them with technology. So we actually do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, we have a device that basically measures vitals, it gives us an electronic medical record it creates. Uh, you know, you do need to basically use the power of Aadhaar at some stage mm. so that you can actually make it truly a national, right. uh, nationally connected uh, healthcare system. So, so what is this data telling you, I mean, which so, you perhaps didn't know earlier? So first and foremost, it's, uh, it's telling you simple stuff like, you know, how many hypertensive patients are there, how many diabetes patients are there, um, you know. Then of course, we are doing other things like uh, uh, mass screening these small populations for different types of cancer. Uh, creating awareness of how to prevent certain types of cancer, you know, oral cancers are the biggest cancers in our country because of tobacco uh, chewing, mm. both smokeless mm. and uh, mm. you know cigarettes mm. and BDs. But uh, by actually uh, focusing on a tobacco cessation program, we've seen a huge decline in, in oral cancers. But mm. catching oral cancers early is almost curative. Mm. So I personally believe when you talk about preventive healthcare, mm. you need to look at what is it that these rural populations suffer from? Just providing clean drinking water reduces most of that disease burden. Things like that, you know, you need to think about it as a public health problem and looking at different ways of downstaging disease. That's what it's all about. Right. And you cannot do this without technology, without diagnostics and without uh, mass screening. At l and this is where med tech plays a very, very important role. You, you'll be astounded to know the number of very innovative med techs that are coming up in our country. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get a, a, a mammogram for a dollar a scan, mm. okay, which is amazing. Yeah. 
you can do any kind of uh, you know cancer screening at that kind of level price point you can uh, you know you you've heard about all the uh, ct scans and mris being developed at a low co in a low cost and way and the artificial intelligence yes, right over absolutely that, yeah. today you can actually read scans in a much more intelligent and predictive way and in a much more accurate way and in a faster way uh, you can eliminate a lot of human skills that are required to deliver good quality healthcare and so on and so forth so you know it is it is something that we need to think about very holistically i don't think this interview is time enough to talk about all the uh, power of technology and iot to actually do all of this but the big challenge uh, as as you seem as as you are now putting it together is is seems to me uh, to me the challenge of capturing data and having those uh, those sensors uh, physical or non physical to actually get that data back and then form that response absolutely so that's really the challenge we have today and unless we look at that approach we will never be able to provide uh, access to decent healthcare to every citizen in our country and we will never be able to address the huge deficit we have of hospital beds or doctors or specialist doctors and that's where technology becomes very very powerful right i remember the figure that you quoted you yourself quoted uh, quite recently 55000 mbps doctors but only about 12% uh, specialists yes and there's a huge gap obviously when it comes to specialists yeah i mean you look at diabetes right it's a huge pandemic for india mm. i mean we have uh, you know over 50 million diabetics and counting and yet we have only so called less than a thousand qualified diabetologists so that's the huge deficit we have so i'm just saying that you know technology is a very powerful bridge for a country like india and we have to think things in a very different way even if we scale up the number of specialist doctors now it's not going to be enough but we can actually make our mbbs doctors smart mm. with tech technology and that's what it's all about right so tell us about i mean so this is on let's say the overall uh, ecosystem and infrastructure of healthcare uh, capture delivery but tell us about the work that you are doing in areas like cancer and diabetes and wh where is technology helping you to let's say come with better or more effective drugs to market in addition to what you're doing already so you know today the most exciting field in cancer is immuno oncology mm -hmm. and the immune system is a very complex system and then there is this whole dovetailing with cancer genomics. Mm. So you're really dealing with big data in every sense of the word. Now, I think the pharma industry globally has been very slow to adopt the power of technology. And today, of course, every big pharma company is scrambling to see how they can catch up and you know, suddenly start becoming technologically savvy. Um, and I think, again, I think uh, India needs to take advantage of being amongst the front runners in adopting technology and digital technologies for research and innovation. A company like ours, even though we're much smaller than the big pharma, we have actually been looking at technology to mine a lot of the data that we already have. Mm -hmm. We've been looking at data to actually embed in our manufacturing processes to make them more efficient and predictable. And I think a lot of this is helping us. And I think the techs, the pharma sector globally uh, is actually looking at ways of quickly using technology and digitizing all their data, all their research data, their manufacturing data, which at up to now was sort of in dossiers and mm. uh, you know in, 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 in print form in, 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 and we had always hard copies. In fact, the mindset of regulators is still not electronic. Mm. We're still supposed to provide, you know, sort of hardbound dossiers, which I think tells you what the mindset of the industry and the regulators is. Slowly, the regulators, of course, are beginning to understand that electronic formats are now going to replace the hard uh, formats. And I think that tells you why we've been sl so slow to adopt it, because the industry is a very risk averse to, you know, using new technologies and new ways of doing things but i think uh, you know it is about being obsolete mm. if you don't do that right. and you know i always say when we keep talking about failure i keep saying that the biggest failure you have is not taking the risk of tech of getting into technology in a big way
Right. So it appears that you know some of the answers to our biggest medical mysteries and questions uh, lie in the data that's already there. And uh, I'm sure you are closer than maybe other people to finding some of those answers. Any, any hints, any insights? Yes, today I think there's a lot of post hoc analysis of all the clinical trials that have ever been conducted. And in fact, there are lots of very interesting tech companies that are basically giving second opinions to patients uh, who are uh, you know, diagnosed with a certain condition, mm. saying, by the way, you will benefit from this drug or this uh, you know, sort of by uh, combination at, uh, by just looking at uh, historic data. Mm. And these are new regimens which have never been tried. Mm. So uh, there's a lot of that kind of data coming out. Then, of course, you do a lot of post hoc analysis as to why certain drugs didn't work and certain drugs worked. And there's now a repurposing of drugs that is becoming a very new way of innovating new drugs. So there's a lot of exciting things happening. But I think today the opportunity is to actually multiplex a lot of data because these are very complex diseases. Mm -hmm. So when you multiplex immunological pathway data with genomic data, with biochemistries, et cetera, et cetera, you're getting a lot of very, very interesting insight into how cancer actually progresses or how cancer is destroyed. Right. And, and looking ahead, I mean, what are the top uh, two or three things on your mind uh, and, and focus areas? So, you know, as a company, of course, we focused a lot on biosimilars mm -hmm. and biosimilars, the way we developed it in the past, I think we want to definitely accelerate the speed of development of biosimilars using technology very intelligently. But uh, the other uh, new areas for us are very exciting. One is, of course, uh, being very embedded in diabetes and cancer. We are very excited by a pipeline of fusion antibodies that we are developing. These are bispecific antibodies which basically target tumors and then engage with the T cells to kill the tumors, okay. just to give it in a very simplistic so is this way. The metastatic cancer, breast metastatic well, cancer it could work in any cancer. It could work in a, in a in a localized cancer. It can work in a metastatic situation. So I think it's a very exciting approach to cancer. And as you know, many cancers which previously could not be even treated are today being cured. And I think that is the exciting progress we are making in cancer research. Mm. And to me, cancer research is the next frontier for Biocon. And we are really focusing on cancer in uh, immuno-oncology in a big way. And there, I think data mining and data intelligence itself is going to be uh, the way forward for Biocon. That's a good note to end on. And I wish you all the best because our Thank lives you. depend on it. Thank, Thank you. you so much.